been playing more video games the, this this month though, so I finally got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and um, I have a lot to say about this game so far. Uh, the The intro to the game, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you don't want any news about it, then I'm I'm really just going to talk about my first impressions because I haven't finished. I'm not even close to finishing it, so this is just my first impressions. Um, but the intro is really underwhelming. So obviously it takes place right after the, the previous one. If you're not familiar, this this is the Final Fantasy VII remake. So 20 years ago, Final Fantasy VII came out. It was a big deal. All this time later in 2024, they are now remaking them for the PS5 and PS4. Remake... Uh, and and but they're doing it in, in installments. So instead of one big game, they're coming out in parts. So three years ago, Final Fantasy VII Remake that was part one that came out, and now part two is called Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and it's continuing the story. So the first, the entire first game was basically based off of the first, I think, five hours or so of the game, and now Rebirth seems a lot bigger. So I'm assuming it's taking place a far more. It's it's taking uh, far more of the original in, into consideration here because um, it seems enormous. It's way bigger than the first game. It's way way different than the first game. Um, but I would say uh, the the intro is quite underwhelming. It's uh, I was surprised at how like not exciting it was. Um, they do they do a little recap and then you play the game and you're just kind of. It, it seems very small stakes and just kind of boring at first. And really the only saving grace at the first little bit is the music. The music, like literally the very first song of the game is a classic. Um, there's a, That's my biggest, I, I, cause for context, again, if you don't remember from three years ago, the podcast I did where I talked about the first game, um, I was never a fan of the original. I didn't play the original. Uh, I still haven't played the original. I have no, I tried to play it, but I was pretty, I was little, it was really my first big RPG, so I didn't. It was too overwhelming for me, and I just didn't really like it. Uh, but I loved the music, and I loved the world and the characters. So I have a strong attachment to the music, and I, I know what happens, and I know the plot um, for the most part, um, the big the big beats. But uh, so the music in this game being completely redone with orchestral stuff, it's it sounds awesome, and it's very even emotional for me as someone who didn't play the original one. So the music is great, and it's really what kept me going. Um, in the in the early moments of the game, but um, very quickly, so you start out in the small village, and very quickly you get out into the the open world. And so there was no actual big open world in the first game; it was very small, very linear. Uh, but this one, you have like kind of, kind of the overworld map, so you're kind of free to roam around these large environments, and they do a good job at still giving you. A lot of direction, but I'll get to that later. The, the thing I want to con- talk about, though, is that it started off pretty weak and underwhelming and a little boring and nothing seemed to be happening. And then you get out in this big open world and you're like, OK, now things are going to start. But it's just tanked by so many st- stoppages in gameplay where you're just you are constantly being shown a, a new mechanic um there's like chocobos there's racing there's boss these like special fights there's there's so there's like 10 different mechanics that are are kind of forced on you to teach you them because they're going to pop up for the rest of the game and they're optional for the most part but the, the game really wants to teach you all of these mechanics all at once and you don't you don't really feel like you're playing the game yet it feels like there's this really long tutorial part of the game that really just it it wasn't like that in the first one and I was just like I and I I was already it's been three years since I played the first one so I was like I don't even remember like I'm still trying to remember like how to even fight in the game because I got to re-remember how the fighting works the fighting system um the materia the you know the even just plot points of the game I, I watched a YouTube recap and there is a recap in the game as well um, but I was just struggling to remember the key moments, let alone like 10 different new, like brand new systems that are in this game. And, and at first, none of them are really that exciting either. So you're like, man, I'm going through like these things and like, there's just constantly new things 
in a bad way being forced on you and you have no choice but to kind of go through the the motions and learn these new systems and there's just so many of them that it feels like you're not actually learning anything because by, by the time you finish the the last one you're already learning a new one then you forget what you just did so it took me a long it took me a while to get to a point um where i felt like I was actually sorry. I'm, I'm getting a bunch of texts here. I'm, I'm got to uh, uh, do that. Um, yeah, it took me a while before I felt like the game even truly began, or that something was even happening um, that was exciting. Because you have to go through this. It, it's it's honestly a long period of time um, before you really get anywhere exciting. However, once you get there. And maybe this is a personal thing. Maybe maybe not everyone will find the beginning to be a slog like I did. But once you get to the point where like okay, you're officially like really free to explore and you can kind of do your own thing and, and start doing side quests and go after the main quest, um, the game returns to being awesome again, um, just like the first one. And I loved how, I, especially in the second one in Rebirth, but both games, I love how you're constantly being motivated to keep going through. It's something that I always talk about in when I talk about games where it's like a lot of games, especially indie games, but a lot of games in general really lack motivation, like minute to minute, beat for beat motivation. Like, why am I doing this? What? A, why, why should I keep going through this game just to keep playing the game more? No, I want something motivating me. And Final Fantasy does a really good job at always being like, hey, keep playing. Like you just got the story piece. Keep playing. Now you can find out what happens here. Keep playing. You can keep, you know, it's just, it always feels like you're reading a novel. It feels like you're going through a storyline, even though it's, it's been opened up and, and there's a big open world. It still feels like you've got direction and a purpose for doing stuff. And they do a really good job at pacing out things. So it doesn't really feel like you're doing things over and over again. Uh, the, the gameplay loop works like this, in my opinion. So the gameplay loop is basically um, you get a large section of the map and there are some things to find, kind of classic open world things. Like there's towers that you can use, you can like activate to survey and open up, you know, kind of uh, like, you know, an Assassin's Creed. There's things you climb and it allows you to see more of the map kind of thing. So there's towers you can find. Um, there's a chocobo ranch you can find that allows you to fast travel and, and hop on chocobos and, and, and run around. There's these shrines you can find. So there's, there's a lot of these classic open world tropes that you, you can do. Um, and then there's some side quests you can do. And there is a main quest with story beats and then usually a boss at some point as well, like a mini boss. And doing this takes quite a bit of time to fully do everything. And I find that so far in the game, I've, I've, the side quests don't really feel optional. They really do feel necessary to be powerful enough to fight the mini bosses. Um, by the time I got to the first mini boss, I lost terribly. And then I went back and did every side quest. There was only like two or three side quests to do. Um, but I did the side quests, leveled up enough, and the fight was still difficult, but I, I beat it. Um, and uh, so I, I felt like I had to do those side quests, and I kind of feel that way about everything. Luckily, they're not there's not tons of them. So like even in, you know when that process repeats again... Um, you're not kind of sick and tired. It doesn't feel like a chore at all. Um, like I said, because of the gameplay loop of, of, you know, finding a new part of the map, getting some side quests, the chocobo thing, a new village, because it takes such a long time to complete the loop, by the time you get to the beginning of the loop again, it kind of feels fresh again. So I, I like the way the gameplay loop works, especially once you get your, your head wrapped around everything, all the systems, all the different gameplay things. Once I got a hang of everything, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. I like it. Um, and then, of course, there's always a, a, a storyline um, that's uh, keeping you wanting to keep playing as well. Um, I heard a couple people online saying they didn't like the mini games. I love the mini games. There's like a card game that I usually don't like. Uh, I don't. I don't usually like little mini games in RPGs, but I love. Two, there's two of them that I've been playing so far in the game, and I love them. I'm I'm, I'm so addicted to both of them. Um, there's like a well, yeah, I won't even talk about them, but yeah, there's there's really fun mini games. Um, I'm just, I actually wrote some notes down while playing because I wanted to remember uh, everything here. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the general consensus was, yeah, the start was really boring, really bad. Um, but it has eventually returned to, I just love it. Like uh, the first game was great. The second game, 
I think is even better as well. Something I really wanted to talk about though was if you remember my thoughts on Sea of Stars where I played it for 30 hours and I just didn't feel like anything happened in the game. It was such a it, it, on, I'm not joking and I hate to be mean like this, but it's probably one of my least favorite games I've ever played in recent memory, uh, which is weird because everything about it is like a 10 out of 10, except for the story. And in an RPG, when that's the most important thing, man, oh man, it felt like such a drag. Like the th- So to put things in perspective, I think there are, I think there's like 17 chapters in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I've played for almost 30 hours and I'm on chapter four. Like I've ba- I've barely gotten into the game. And those 30 hours feel like 20 minutes. Like I felt I feel like I've barely played the game and I've already put in almost as much time into it that I did with Sea of Stars. But because I'm having such a great time, time is flying by. Sea of Stars feel like it felt like I played that game for years. And just nothing was happening and so it just, it just it just makes everything feel like a like a drag to me and i know that's a i'm the minority on that that kind of an opinion on sea of stars but i just the nothing in the storyline really spoke to me and the characters were pretty bland in the story like nothing really happened in my opinion um whereas final fantasy there's just always something going on um and there's just, you know, and it just, even just small things. It's just like, oh, cool. Like, I want to do that. That seems like, like, like oh, cool. I got turned into a frog or, or something weird happens, right? Like, just always something happening that makes you want to go like, oh, I wonder where this goes. And it's just that you, I really, I personally really need that motivating factor when I do anything, whether it's watching a movie, reading a book, playing a game, especially with video games. If I don't feel like I have a, a direct motivation in the game for why I'm playing, I lose interest very quickly. Um, and I, I don't mean literal motivation. I, I mean like, like as a human, I mean like in the game, like why am I walking from this spot to this spot? If it's simply because... Hey, thanks for listening to this clip of my podcast. I publish new episodes on the last Friday of every month at 12.45 p.m. PST for all premium members of my Patreon. My name is Cooper Bebo. I'm an actor, writer, and producer of film, television, and video games. Head to patreon.com slash cooperbebo. You can sign up for free, get access to my blog, or you can toss me a few dollars if you want to support me and get special bonuses like this very podcast, or you can subscribe to my YouTube. You'll continue to get free clips and a brand new video every single Wednesday. So whether you like to watch, listen, or read, I've got something for everyone. I've also got a video game called Billy Saves the World. Please check that out on Steam right now. I've got movie projects in the works. I update all of that stuff in Discord all of the time. Again, the basic channels are free to join. Just head to patreon.com slash cooperbebo to get access. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next clip.